celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. And this on Memorial Day weekend, of course, we remember in a special way at this Mass, all our brothers and sisters who died in defense of our country and our freedoms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. First letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you're insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your sons, so that your sons may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your sons may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the one and only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them. And they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have glorified in them. Now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Imagine how the apostles must have felt in that upper room. Abandoned, afraid, again, for the second time. The first time they were in lockdown was after his death. Fear gripped them, and they went to that upper room and locked the door. And in the midst of their fears and the locked doors, our Lord came and stood before them, granted them peace, gave them the power to reconcile people back to God, showed Thomas his hands and his side and his feet, and they believed. Our Lord was with them for 40 days. Forty precious days of precious memories, deep instructions, feelings of accomplishment and love and security. The Lord is risen, ate with them, drank with them, was with them. And then as we just celebrated this past Thursday, our Lord physically left them again and ascended to heaven. And there, they were once told again to go, go back to Jerusalem and wait. That place where they felt safe, the upper room, that now sacred room, where fear became peace, where they had been given the Eucharist, their priesthood, where they had heard the intimate last words of their master and Lord, and also heard that beautiful, intimate prayer between the Son and his Father, where Christ had given himself to them in a profoundly personal and an eternal way. And there they waited and prayed again for nine days. But this time in that upper room, things were a bit different. They were waiting for his Spirit, and there was someone else in the room this time, his own blessed mother. And since Good Friday, now their mother, and our mother as well. And there they waited, in prayer, in one accord. That room, that upper room, so central to so much of the early story of Christianity. It was the very home 
of the beginnings of the church. It was in that very same room that they would be filled with the power of God's love of the Holy Spirit. And as they were waiting and praying, I wonder if they recall the words of today's Gospels. They would be glorified, and Christ was glorified in them. That the Lord was praying, praying for them, as the Lord prays for us at this very second. I pray for the ones you have given me. For anyone who has ever felt afraid or alone or abandoned or even unloved, those may be the most beautiful words in the whole world. I pray for you. To tell someone that you are praying for them are not empty words or a political throwaway line, but rather it's a wonderful gift to give to someone, a special thing to do, to raise someone and their intentions before God. is a power that we all have as priestly people. To know that the Lord prays for us and for all those who have been given to him through baptism turns all our fears, our loneliness, or our doubts to their opposites. Christ intercedes for us because he's a part of us. And we find ourselves these days, like the apostles, like our Blessed Lady, each of us in our own upper room, a place of prayer, a place of wandering and watching and waiting, anticipation. All of those emotions are certainly ours. It feels so familiar to us these days. For a lot of you have been forced by circumstances to stay home to stay, if you will, in your upper room. And your home now has become your office or your classroom or your gym. Moments like this, even your parish church. But it's always good to remember the apostles didn't stay in that upper room forever. That comfortable room, that safe room, that place of refuge and protection. No. After they were filled with the Spirit, the doors of that room were opened up into the world and they went out, filled with that spirit, filled with that fire. Soon, please God, very soon, the doors of our own lockdown will be slowly opened. But the question that we need to ask ourselves for these days between now and next Sunday is what will we bring out from the upper room that we're in right now into the world. When we are reopened, the Holy Spirit will come to us next week at Pentecost. And once again, we will be charged with that Spirit of God's love. And then as St. Peter wrote to us in the second reading, rejoice, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, that when his glory is revealed, you may rejoice exultantly. And during this Easter season, we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing the Lord prays for us, we now join our prayers to his. For the renewal of your church on earth, that it will be ignited by the gifts of the Holy Spirit to zealously share the joy and hope offered through the death and resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our country on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for those who have offered their life as a sacrifice to our country, for our country, and may their reward be great in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those providing essential services, that their work be accepted with gratitude and they remain healthy and protected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the strategies put in place to keep us healthy, that this disease be successfully brought under control and eliminated as a health risk, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are sick and dying in isolation without the care of their loved ones, for our beloved dead and all who have died, may the light of Christ conquering over death be their support and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We present to God in the silence of our hearts our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, good and gracious Father, we turn to you at this moment in time to plead to you to end this pandemic, to spare our loved ones and us from sickness. Help those who are inflicted, their families who must see them from afar, and those who help and care for them. May our Blessed Lady, the health of the sick, Saint Joseph, the protector of our church, Saint Margaret of Antioch, our patroness, intercede for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for him. For his name, for our good and give all his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our holy state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. petition through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church be pleased to grant her peace to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living in truth. In communion with those whom memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, given you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Love a history of celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased, look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at this altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, we may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servant. Who have gone before us with the sign of faith and the word. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all those who have place of refreshment, light and peace. Plus also your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, gracious to grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Petua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And you, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, Sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next Sunday, of course, is the great solemnity of Pentecost. It is the second greatest feast day of the church right after Easter. It is the conclusion of the Easter season. So I invite you in a special way to be with us next Sunday at 11 o'clock as we celebrate in the most solemn way the solemnity of Pentecost. As you've heard already on the news, the governor and the Archbishop of New York, Cardinal Dolan, has asked us as a parish to come up with different plans, and we have indeed done that, um, ready for the day when all of us will come together. All that information will be sent out to you at the appropriate time as far as the church and the safety of the church and the safety of all of us who are gathered at that day when we come together. We will have mass upstairs and we'll live stream downstairs. Thank God that we have outdoor speakers so we can have broadcast to the whole neighborhood if you want to. So all that information as we come and we see from the Cardinal permission to open up the churches for mass, certainly that information will be sent out to you. But in the meantime, we pray for one another and we pray for that day it will come to us very soon. Monday, of course, is Memorial Day, and we'll offer special Mass here by Father Clark and myself privately for the intentions of all those for our country, most particularly for those who died uh, serving our country in the wars. So we pray for them. Have a blessed Sunday with you and your family, and we look forward to being with you again next week. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat>